Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample number 15. It's a wet bagged hand layup carbon panel, foam core. Skins are just a 6 ounce and woven and a 12 ounce biax. And I'm going to do it with uh, the pre homemade pre preg method. So I'm using Proset 135 resin, and here's my cheat sheet for mixing up batches. I've got, I think, about 400 grams. And for this panel, I'm going to show a process for doing wet layup that lets you be almost as neat as with prepreg. It's nice for doing tape jobs and things where you're having to cut patterns out of the material. It lets you cut very accurately, place things neatly because the wet material is sandwiched on both sides with sheets of plastic. This is the 200 gram slash 6 ounce twill and it's thin enough that I can wet it through from one side. And I've got some tape around the edges from when I cut it off the bigger roll. I like to place lines of tape where I'm going to make the cuts and then cut through the middle of the tape so that it doesn't fray. So I've just got this setting on top of some painter's plastic and I'm going to wet through with the resin until I've got all of the fabric wet out. Looking at the back, it's still pretty dry. I'm trying to use as little resin as possible so I don't get big puddles. Doing it kind of by feel. Once it starts to go through, I know it'll soak through once I squeegee the whole operation from both sides. Here I just folded it over. It was close. It's nice sometimes to have two separate pieces of plastic. And now with a new squeegee that's not covered in resin, I'm going to work out all the air until there's just plastic, wet out carbon, and more plastic. Trying to keep the wrinkles to a minimum. I fold it over and I can see there's pretty much no air left and it's nicely wet all the way through. So now it's easy to handle. There's no exposed resin. I can cut things out of here. I'm going to place it off to the side. And for the 12 ounce biax, 400 gram, I'm going to use some old bag film that may or may not have holes in it that I'm not interested in taking a risk on. Thicker plastic is nice for thicker material and in this case because it's hard to wet through that biax from one side I'm putting a little puddle of resin underneath just so there's already some resin on the bottom side and wetting through here pushing the resin around till I've got what I think is going to be about enough I try to wet them out about 50 percent resin to fiber just by weight if I'm doing it I'm measuring out the resin just so I'm sure there's enough here I've had to patch in another piece of plastic I just make sure the lap is pretty big so the resin doesn't squeeze out in between and come back again with a clean squeegee because the whole point of this is to not get resin on the back of the plastic if you don't have to it just makes handling a lot easier and now when you've got the material all wet out like this it's not in a pot anymore you have plenty of time to work with it and for larger things for taping structure into something or doing large wet laminations you can wet out whole tables of this this way and then someone could be cutting out patterns or cutting strips out of it with a razor knife for doing um, long sort of linear tabbing and taping jobs and it's really nice because it's easy to handle the fibers don't get all messy and the main downside is it is a waste of plastic and in this case I'm just using it to show the process and for other things that are kind of fussy it uh, lets you get away with pre preg like handling you know the edge cuts are not going to be as nice but on the whole it's a it's a pretty good way to and I'm here you can see squeezing out excess resin by working along with the squeegee this makes sure that there's really just the minimum amount of resin there needs to be in there. I can really work it out to the edge and then 
I'll take these and cut the the outside edge off uh, leaving just a square that's the size of the little panel I'm gonna make and now these I'll set aside it's all wet through it's easy to handle and I'm gonna wipe down the table I'm gonna lay up on this is just adhesive Teflon so the surface is gonna be okay but not great and I'll peel off one side of the plastic on this first layer of six ounce twill it's kind of hard sometimes to peel it off without making a mess of the fiber but here it's really just about showing the process and even though the bubbles can't come through the plastic I'm just pushing it down here with the wet out roller uh, to get it so that I can peel the plastic off without messing up the fiber too much if this were like a cosmetic situation then um, you'd have to be pretty fussy about it and uh, peel off the top plastic only once it was in place you can see the edges didn't come up there and this is the biax this is a 12 ounce I'm gonna put that down on top peel the plastic here and just making sure it doesn't come up it tends to the edges tend to lift up and just going over the whole thing with a bubble popper before placing the core and to wet out the bottom of the core I've just put some resin on there and I'm just doing a light squeegee to fill in all the cells of the core this is perforated core so there's going to be some room for resin to bleed from that bottom skin up through just a minimum of resin to wet the core so there's decent adhesion there and it's not going to steal all the resin out of the fiber I'll do the same on top I'm not being super fussy about how much resin I've got here um, you could certainly get away with applying it with a, a thin nap paint roller for larger areas but here it's just about showing how the panel how the process works to make a panel this is my palette you can see it's kind of a disaster I'm just taking the pieces and cutting them out with scissors to the right shape you could of course trace cardboard or plywood patterns with fiber and orientation um, if you wanted to that was the two piece um, where I had run out of material so there's plastic on one side and I just had to pull both off the other because it had that little overlap so now you can see it's, the edges are a little messy uh, peeling that up rolling it and then I'll do the same with that last ply of six ounce twill and peel that plastic off kind of looks like I left the plastic on the bottom of that but that was just wet resin I went back and checked and uh, I definitely made sure to remove the plastic that's key it's easy to leave the plastic in there especially if you're doing more complicated things and it's uh, detrimental to the structural performance of the part as you'd imagine so I'm rolling this out I'm gonna then just put a pretty basic bag stack on top peel ply perforated release film and I'll try and make sure that the peel ply doesn't have any wrinkles in it just so everything looks nice come back and give it a quick roll the wet out roller really makes a lot of difference for this uh, pretty much any hand layup situation is improved by rolling it's uh, really a great tool and so this is a I think P3 perforated film. It's clear. It's a different material than I've used in some of the other samples. And so now I will come back with my breather, my gloves off, and a vacuum bag that is a little bit too small. And if you've watched any of these before, you've seen me vacuum bag an awful lot, and so I'm not going to dwell on that here. When in doubt, make it bigger here I did the most common problem and made it too small but that's a piece of MTI hose for vacuum infusion that I'm using on the outlet side just because I had it stuck to the end already it's a nice thing to uh, make sure you don't suck up resin you can put it across laminate if you want or up in a pleat and there it is you can see it's tortured in but the MTI hose doesn't let resin through and uh, it works really nicely for this but there's the bleed coming through as the vacuum comes down and 
that was the panel uh, right before I demolded it from the table. And the vacuum wasn't crazy. It was up um, about 23 inches of mercury. And you can see the MTI hose uh, dissected in demolding and the edge of the panel with uh, excess air that's with the peel ply still on it. Came out pretty nice. You can definitely see the fiber um, from the biax on the top side, but the table surface had very little air for a hand laid up panel and um, a little bit of air in the peel ply surface, but nothing you to worry about. And all of the panel looked really nice. The weight was about 12 and a half ounces per square foot and 357 grams per square foot. And cutting the panel out, I did a little burning of the core. That's because I was using this diamond copy cutting bit. And you can see the core cell heated up and smeared on there. That's uh, just one of the problems with trying to machine this foam core. But it turned out pretty nice and is a good example of how to use that process. Thanks for checking it out.